ojo ma pe ti ti ojo agbin o bona ba ji na ji na adupin o ati sare adupin are abati ji ya adupin ya o ati sun sun ati kan o giri o ma ti pe yin ko lo se imo o be ni o ile o ni po na ka re ju o mi pa le aye o ni po ro ka jo ati pa ソマレ、オペダトマシソペキヨバオマバオニラ。ニノ、イノニラ、ティヨバワイ。トオトダイミロジュニペ、コシソルションシオロヨバドペ、エジャキヨバオダドロ。エジャキヨバオマロ。エ
Make it the law, my dog boy, teach it twenty five. Need the new dog gone, see you, Baco, the new boo, to be a lot of the way. Tibashi thirty, I get twenty five per cent. Check out what we do, Bashi mistake. Ah, she mistake you. Kara. Oh, to yaki yo, bari aku no lati yuri lo fa. E to yaki yo, bari. To le gbe wako o loko anon. To le gbe wako o loko o pa yi keke. Yo, ba ma kwa a mari. Oh, to ye, ko de kun ba no je fwa. To ye, ko de kun ya fwa yo ba. To ye, ko de kun ima mu yo ba le ru. Yo, ba kwa mwa uri. A wwa wo si ni, a wwa ka fi shi o lori, ni le yo ba. La to yo ba, do yo lo she lu. A wwa kwa me jire, ti wwa je o lori le yo ba, o lo she lu, a ta wwa ba. So wwa she la di pe, 70% ti a wwa ba wakwa pa, o lo she lu lo pa nou mwa. 70% a wwa ba wak, ta a gwa kwa li, O lo se nou lo pa nou, wan ti tori e gan. Lo se jek pe, wan fi pa dlan ki de wan lè nou. Pe lo bo ya to jè yo ba, wan kon wan sa. To li pa wan fo la wan nan, wan ti jò jè lo li ewe, wan ti jò mou lo li ewe, pe lo lo se. Ni ek ba mi pa pa, i mi ti xo se lou da da o ti wan, ni po si wan ju koto do ba. Lo se jek pe, e, le ri, ka wan ba li ba wa se ri. Mwa o lepwe ba wa se kwe. Iri ba wa se ri. Ade kwa to ma afe ti mwa. To li kwe kwe ti mwa ti mwa. Iya si jyo mwa yu ba lo jyo juma. O fwa lo gura. Iya jyo mwa yu. Lo to o. La ane yu ba no e jan jen jen son lata ri o. E yon kon niti mwa ti ade go ki. Bi mwa se 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 kouche. Ade do yon ata mwa e bie. Bi mwa se 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 kouche. Yo ba, si yo ba ni yen. Yibo si yibo nou ama shira wan. Ben la ou sa sa ou sa ou nan ou ben yin. Aman ti yo ba, ton waton le ken ka. Ot be kon, jouta wan yami ti toko lò. Ki de di, i mota le ni ni kan. I nou ne bi ni, te mbe le kon atote. Lò kou ye yo ba de wou kota wa yi. A wa le ni wadjou ta le wadjou. An lò ma shi wa le ni yi. To ba jen ti bobo wa pa dok pa la po. Ka so kwe no retreat no so renda. O da mi lo ju pe. Yo ba ti bo kwo lo kwe ru. Chou pa ba shen so to yi. A wo kwa wa to shi so kwe se. E yi te ba ti so rok pa yi ma wo nan ni. E yi te ba ti so rok pa yi. Ta fi ke yi di ya to le da lo ru. Mwa ri wa bi e to da lo. Kon si sen to le nan wa so ke nou bukba wan to soro yi pe omon te mi bo shi pari yi wè ba yi lo ri shes rate pe nou bo bo koti wan di mou. Lè yi amon senetor, amon governors, amon sofrefs, amon president, amon la amon tosi yi shen la la nou nan yi da yi diya. Mi fe kasi ba wa ni shen petroleum, e ni bo ni ta. Ti me kasi ba wa Central Bank, eh, ni bo si ta. Ti wo fi fe lo mi si be. Chou bo ti fe kasi. Tu ba wa no si yon lok pa. Ti no si ami, tu jen lo krout. Wa advatay se si ta. Ke ma bo, ke wa fe be di kou. Chou bo bi ti o, 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 lan la wa gan, ti wo, o, o, lan lo chou. Wa jen pe wa si. An mwa bwa se se la ni a la mwa. Mwa lwe nan. A se so pe ikon nan ni wa. E we are the same. We are one. Mbo. Yes we are one. But we are not being treated equally. Judge you well. O lan lan mas a equal. But some are more equal than others. Judge you well so pe. Ou gwe nan koni konan ni wano. Koni sou gwa wano kon waton kon lakbara. Ki wano lakbara jwa wano kon lan.
Won bi president wa leri. Baba je nigba gbo se si mo. Pe pe oro aje wa ti lo seyi do do do. Won ka percentage ti ko wa lana to wa leni, ni to wa lana, ni to wa leni. Igba ti ba mo face. Baba ni so so fe everybody ko pada soko. Ke everybody lo ma soko. Then ni ke mi o de bo lo so pe ko ma soko. Ka wa so pe wa be soko. Se ta o fula ni se ni o ba ma fi confidence oko o lo soko. I mo ye eni wa loko to wo wo na ti sawale ko ba ma pa won sibe tori titu fula de fi won pa ni periko ki se ko kekere o ka nu si la ro eni ru channel wa itu ti awon 50 fula ni 50 a doctor fula de fully out pelu ak47 lo wa ta won ko ja oloro won si lo si community kan lo do won pa won mo se fe pa won mo sha to ma se lesi lesi what a log be? One Nigeria Tower. Who did she leave there? He left you back at the little pair. Coffee for coffee, I was not allowed. Ben on the coffee, let you see it. Who bow on coin, you want me, Baba Larry? Hey, Baba, kill every sea of toilet city, Baba. Otto, the city, Baba. What about my sorrow? Who is she? Eh, I don't love a lot of my old back. How long you call out your queer ball? You told Shelley, you need a new back. Or not to call your own is so sorry. A total, eh? Shake up my poor hour. Restructure your no restructure. You poke on your bashing my bar. I am stand to be corrected. Anything I want be no more ready. Last year, the structuring. Your bawani restructuring is late. Memorandum, when you come, 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 when Oya, e wo ni kashi. A wè ni yi, wò kora wò jò, la yi pè yi, wò ni wò fè hò nò wò pè. Yi tè yi pè ni ri son jò, yi tè yi lè fè yi a tè wà fè. E yi jò ba gò tè lò wò fè fò rà wò. Yi jò ba lò wò fè fò rà wò. O gò mò yò ba, kò ni wò mi lò jò a yè wà wò. Lati o ki pata pata. Ni wọ́n ti kokon ti o go nye bo mi. O de wọ́n le lò diè diè. Diè diè. Diè diè. Afiki yo ba kate ti soro. Afi kate ti shento ye kashi. Ki o go nye ma ma wọ́n mi ka le fajà de nou mi. Toro ti wọ́n mi lò. Ba wọ́n lò mò mò te mi o se ni shè wù. Ba wọ́n le mi o se ni shè wù. Ba wọ́n la wọ́n mò mi o se ni shè wù. Afrika do jo ko son. A wong kon kura wong jo. Wong di man di foun. Wong pe di foun. To ye kon pe di foun. Lò wong. Bou gwa ba ye. I kwi lè yo ba la fè. E jè kè bwa gwe kwa rò. Wong restructure or no restructure. Because no matter how. Ton fi lè restructure. Lè yi lè yi lò ma di yen te lè yè. Nò ni wong ma fi ti yo ba she. Se e gbọn ta won fula ni ati Abuja so ni. Won la won la won ni Nigeria. Won ni belongs to us. Won de ni ready. Lati gbe jo ba le fun Yoruba. Pe ki Yoruba to wa so pe ohun je ga ba le awon lori won ti ni ko jo mo. Ki lo wa de ta fi agidi le ko ti o le. It's very clear. We made the declaration saying that it's too late for restructuring in Nigeria. You will remember in 1962 there was a massive problem in Nigeria when Awolowo was arrested. 
Our people talked to us. There was crisis for over four years that led to the coup. There was a Yoruba um, meeting of elders called the uh, Yoruba leaders of thought. We relented. The thing continued. Yoruba has continued to lose ground since that time. In 1993, there was the annulment of the June 12 election. Shiju Ade, the former army, spoke and said Yoruba should go ahead and you know conduct an election. We did. It led to nothing. The same thing happened 1998, just before the handover to the democratic elected government. Yoruba did not want to go for anything like Nigeria again. But then it failed. Look at where we are. Yoruba has been losing ground since 1914 and we are just tired we are not for restructuring it's too late for restructuring in nigeria it's too late for sovereign national conference it's too late for resource control what we want now is Odudua republic and we are very categorical about that we have made that very clear declarations and we are very serious about our demands every region just go to its own tent Yoruba wants to be on its own because the problem, the, the problem that Yoruba has is Nigeria. Nigeria is the problem, is the impediment to Yoruba development. Is the impediment to Odua development. Without Nigeria, we won't be where we are. 1960, we were far ahead of South Korea and North Korea. We were far ahead of China even. We had television before France. We had radio before South Africa. Now look at where we are today. I think it's a shame that even any Yoruba man can be talking about restructuring at this point in time. What are we restructuring? This, this, this country that is already shot to pieces? I don't think that's what we want. But they are always talking about giving Nigeria a chance. The patience of Yoruba Niger with Nigeria has come to an end. <laughs>ntuwanja <laughs> Se gbọn kan ta won eni to toro ninu video yen so. Oni restructuring ti late. Referendum yen gogon gogon lodu. Yen gogon loro. Ni gba ti baba ma down. Ori si si ni baba so. Ori si ni si bere de ni won bi baba lere. Mo fe fi wa le lori kan ni yi pelu Interview ti won se fun baba ka wa na ojo gbadun interview yi ba kan na ni pe ke wa ko si comment nje solution wa nu oro lu ina se yoruba ka lo lo da ni abi ka ma la si joko ti restructuring ba kan na ni pe ki le ri si gbogbo dawun si baba gbe to dawun ninu video yi ki le yin ri si be mo fe ki kini ko ye wa o mo fo lo bura baba mo nkan to se o la ka yi e pe gan ki se ko sik eni ti won bi le re ru to so iru eyin e wo e wo video yi inu arun yin de bi pe e fe pa teli papa 
na won ton bi to dodge o mo mo to ro mo pa won ti pari ise Allah wa si dada fun wa mo fe fi wa le pelu ohun ti iru interview ti wo se fun la lo da buja ata won o da un system to down in tari be e ja ko si comment oni o se oloka se gbo yin te ba wa wo gbo yin na la dupe lowo e o gbo yin te n ba mi comment lati eje ta si jere mo ku ka comment gbogbo yin mo de ra won e koko ninu awon ko te so e se won dupe o oju te fi wo mi o de fo o eti te si fi gbo mi o nidi layo his speech and in that speech you told Nigerians, you said, and I quote, the persistent insecurity in certain parts of the country may have threatened to unravel the incremental gains achieved. Did you envisage the enormity of the task when you promised to tackle insecurity as president and commander in chief of our country? Well, I think you can recall that uh, when I was campaigning, right, 2015, there were three fundamental issues, security, economy, and fighting corruption. And for Nigerians to be fair to this administration, is to try and find out from the time we won the election in 2015 to now, in the three promises we made, improving security, improving the economy, and trying to fight corruption. Well, securing the country in the northeast, if you ask anybody from Borno State, from Yobe State, from Adamawa State, there were a number of local governments, about 18, that were in the hands of Boko Haram. None of any local government now in, is strictly in the hands of Boko Haram or Iswap. So, in that respect, we have done something. The economy, don't forget, and I challenge so many people to go and check with the central bank or NNPC, the production from 1999 to 2014 was 2.1 million barrels a day, average production, at the average cost of 100 American dollars per barrel. When we came, somehow, the militants were unleashed in the south-south. Production went down to half a million barrels a day. And I think, I think by some fabulous coincidence, the price again collapsed to about $37 per barrel. But to look at what we did within the time frame and the resources available to us relative to the government uh, we inherited. Well, the economy and security are two very pressing areas, Mr. President, and I'm sure that over and over again we'll keep going there. Uh, you talked about how the militants were unleashed. Some people will say that President Eredwa also faced that crisis uh, when he ascended, uh, when he became president, and that was one of the reasons why he had to you know, come up with the amnesty program. But I'll take you back again to security. You've spoken about the progress we've made in the Northeast, and that is true. The camps are being emptied. The Northwest continues to be of concern where we see bandits, uh, you know, unleashed in many parts of the Northwest, sometimes getting to the north central of the country. Would you say that we understand fully the problems we're currently facing in terms of security in the Northwest? In the Northwest, it's the same people, the same culture, stealing each other's animals, killing each other, burning villages. So I think the only language they, uh, they understand, we discussed it thoroughly with the law enforcement agencies, the service chiefs, the inspector general of police, is to go after, uh, you know, the, the terrorists. We label them terrorists, and we are going to deal with them with such. And I believe if you go to those constituencies in the Northwest and North Central, Within the last four weeks, there are improvements in the security. 
that is influenced the spirit. It is true. I mean, because the farmers' herders' crisis um, was one that was a big challenge a few years back and maybe a few months back as well. Mm. Uh, it's come down somewhat, but some people are attributing it to the seasons. They think it's about the weather. And that now that we're entering the peak of the dry season, perhaps we could see a resurgence again. Would you say that we have dealt with that problem once and for all, or do you fear that it could rear its head again? We cannot do much about the weather, but about the security, we have taken steps and we are seeing the results and we thank God for that. For the weather, we can only pray and hope that uh, uh, the weather they are mentioning, the climate change and so on. Uh, Nigeria, we are very susceptible to such uh, issues because of our population and the size of the country. Population is the size of the country. I made that reference to weather because, you know, people believe that when things get dry up north, that's where you begin to see the herders coming down south, and that's when we see the resurgence of the conflict between farmers and herders. So that's why I made reference to the weather. Do you think that that has been sorted once and for all? Yes. Um, the ministers of agriculture from out of Obe to Mahmoud now, uh, one of the issues I discussed with them personally is to go and get the gazettes of First Republic, especially from the northern states. There are cattle routes and grazing grounds. And uh, the uh, cattle areas are confined to those areas. Those that go outside that one are arrested and farmers are encouraged to come and lay their claims. If they don't have the money, their cattle are, were sold and the farmers are settled. So we said we have to go back uh, to the system again uh, to try and make sure that uh, we prepare the grazing areas, acidums, windy mills, uh, you know, e even veterinary departments so that the herders don't stray into people's farms and uh, into the towns and so on. So really, we, we, we are working on that. The back and forth and issues of security continued. The focus for us was to highlight the solutions on how to bring an end to the killings. The concern here, Mr. President, is finding a lasting solution. What in your mind do you think can help bring a lasting solution to these issues, herder crises and the issues of banditry. There is a problem of culture. And problem of culture, uh, you have to study it to understand it. Um, the life of normal herders, the ones with a lot of kids, they depend entirely on them. They sell the milk. Times Square or Thousand Street Yeah Times Square or Thousand Street Oh yeah Ile Jura Ie Jima Yato Yeah I want ya real lawyer to say Wele 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 Ah Onje Aladi Do Aje Bonola Stand by electricity to for seven Nino Yeah Full guarantee security About to pay to Reno in Times Square hotels, in the bar, club, swimming pool, events, garden, many be yeah. Any tossing me and yeah, get from what in my job, do you know? Times Square hotels, more be from. Otoni tolu, otoni tolu tolu, otoni tolu wo. Alo otoni to moto, ba bagbi opo lote o jokonko ni she lagbe sole. Ara otoni ti le itura Times Square hotel and suite. Ajano kukoja mori nko firi. Ile itura Times Square hotel and suite ya to. Sanwa ile itura gbarogu. Sheta nwa yara tori ringi din bi afi yon ba. Kbe lwa yi amule tutu ton fe yi. Awa unwe lo ikbalo de loni ronron lowa. Ninu awa yara Times Square hotel and suite. Ni fitori shiri shi yara.
Ara tiki je ke ni o ma la ile ti po si se bi single room standard room deluxe room bembe diplomatic suite gan o gbe yin se ti royal suite yi gan la fe so ni iyen gan laye a je bi oba so un te wa day times square hotel and suite te ori se ti yaro ipagan ni conference room abi ti standard bar area ibi igba fe to duro dede swimming pool wa nbe ni no ba tiki dakureku fun wakati merinle lo internet service wa oda night club un bembe ibi aye gbo ko si to rere na tun wa e gbo kila tun wa kiri ojere times square hotel and suite wa ni number 1 times square close ajebo oru jebu ogun state tabi ke pe 08109898110 tabi 08060598367090591522244 wa yin te wa loke okun plus 1240462413 times square hotel and suite the height of luxury they sell the animals to pay uh, tax and so on and buy say sugar or salt or something is their entire way of life so if those cattle were taken away from them they normally become very wild because that's the only thing they know. It's a cultural problem. And the way we do it, it starts from bottom upwards. The leadership to make sure that uh, the grazing areas and the water points are secure to them. That they don't have to go through some people's farm to go to the water points. Once say you have got 50 cows, after eating grass, they will just head where to drink. If the governor, for example, uh, suggested that we need to bomb these bandits in their forest, are you looking in that option, uh, a full military assault on them? Because what is on the minds of an average person in the Northwest is to see a situation where these bandits are taken out totally. The kidnapping, the killings of innocent Nigerians in that, in that region. Well, I told you what we have done. We met at least uh, four times with the service chiefs and other law enforcement agencies. Each meeting taking at least four hours. We have discussed thoroughly what to do with the situation. Luckily, I have a military background from the civil war to now. So we discuss on what we understand and we try to secure and make it safe for the leadership at communities level. Because it's very important, the best intelligence, you get it from the, the, the local leadership. Because they, they know who is who in their areas of responsibilities. You have, to, you have to talk to them. But you must make sure they are safe. Because uh, the bandits, or whatever you call them, uh, they can... Uh, be a source of insecurity to them or to their members of the family. And we are very conscious of that. But I ask you to please try and check within the last six weeks and so there is an improvement in the Northwest and North Central. I probably want us to move, because of our time, uh, to some other areas that are also very important. But, Mr. President, I'd like you to uh, please answer to the concerns of those who have the belief that policing or security issues are majorly local. And we've seen state governments and regional governments also thinking in that direction. In the southwest, they're talking about Motekun. In the southeast, they're talking about Ebubaago. And a lot of people are thinking about reformation of the police system, state policing. Do you think this is a possible solution to the insecurity in Nigeria? Well, um, you see, the role of traditional rulers must not be undermined. Because in their areas, as I said, they know who is who. Even by families, not even talk of individuals. So we have to revert to that uh, system for us to have an effective security in the localities. 
for example, there were two governors that came to see me about problem, and I don't mind telling, saying that the governors of uh, uh, um, Oyo State and the governor of uh, uh, this other state in uh, Ondo, not Ondo, Oyo State and one other state. I said, because the herders were in their forests, but the animals were going into the neighboring farms and eating the crop. I said, as far as I know, the farmers and the herders have been coexisting in Nigeria. Let them go and ask the local leadership what has gone wrong, what, why the break in communication between the local leadership and the herders that come on, on seasonal basis, the routes they follow, the forests they, 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 they confine themselves to. Why are they now extending into, into the farms of people? I just sent them back because these things are, haven't been happening this year or last year or 10 years ago. For generations, people have been living like that. So the state policing is not an option? No, state policy is not an option. Now, find out now the relationship between local government and the governors. Are they getting, at the third tier of government, are they getting what they are supposed to get constitutionally? Are they getting it? Try and see those people from local government that have confidence in you to tell you the truth, the fighting between local government and the governors. I think it's fair for us to go into the economy. It is indeed, Sean. Let's, um, Mr. President, you know, you performed a few activities. Uh, while a lot, of people, a lot of people thought you were going to be winding down for, for the holidays, um, and we're thinking that perhaps the budget might not be signed again. Uh, maybe we'll have to wait till January, especially because of the implementation of the electoral, beg your pardon, the signing of the electoral act, which was sent back to the National Assembly, non assented to. We thought that that was not going to happen, but there was a surprise package. You signed the 2022 budget into law, but you had very strong reservations about it. Uh, and you did not mince words in saying how you felt about that. I mean, provisions for as many as 10,733 projects were reduced, while 6,576 new projects were introduced into the budget by the National Assembly. Those are some of the things that you, uh, some of the objections which you raised. Do you fear that the budget might not be able to achieve its purpose? No, not at all. My confidence that uh, we can uh, successfully implement the budget was because in both houses, our party is leading. It's APC party and the leadership Look at the Senate President. He was in the House of Representatives, I think, two times or three times before he went to the Senate. He read fee for PhD. Look at Femi Fetcher Miller. I was watching on the television when he was an ordinary member. He was always on his feet fighting for the party and, and the system we believed in. So really, I, I consider myself lucky my party and their competent leadership are both leading in the Senate and the House of Representatives. That's why you don't hear much about me. I allow them to do all the things because I can't go against my party and I can't go against people I have absolute confidence in. I know they are doing their best. So you do not think that the objections which you have raised is going to raise any friction between the executive arm and the legislature? No, it wouldn't. The legislature is amazing me. If you could recall, about 60% of them didn't come back. Can't they think of what is happening in their constituencies? We have so much support in their constituencies. Their predecessors made the mistake and they haven't come back. They have lost their jobs and maybe they have lost their names. So they have to be very careful. Indeed. Maybe that's why they're asking for direct primaries. 
uh, which you have told them roundly you're no. not going to support. No, I'm not going to support. Personally, I don't support direct fire marriage because I want people to be given a choice. You can't give them one option and, and, and you think that you are being democratic. Let them have three, the three options. The, the three options? I thought there were only two, direct and indirect. No, there is a... Consensus? Consensus. There are three options. Which is your favorite? Because you, as president, when you were coming at the, at the very first time as the presidential candidate of the APC, direct primaries was what your party went with. Why are you now saying that, you know, there has to be three options when you know that that's perhaps the one that would have favored you the most at the time when you were coming in, the fairest option, so to speak? I would expect you to have asked me, how did we overthrow the PDP? And that explanation would have come uh, with your answer. You remember, if you recall, ACN, Abuga, ANPP, CPC, and another party, we came together. PDP was so overconfident that they thought they would rule Nigeria up to the end of time. But the opposition, we came together, we overthrew them. They overthrew them because you were able to emerge as the presidential candidate of your party. And that was because of direct primaries. No, no, not, 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 not as a result of direct. As a result of the opposition coming together and fighting the sitting party, the PDP. It's because we, 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 we agreed to come together. As I told you, four, four, four or five fighters. Mr. See, President, do you think that you would have had a fighting chance if your party at that time had adopted indirect primaries? Whichever we look at it, the fact that we came together is what gave us the success we had. Um, if we didn't come together, the four, five, four, five parties wouldn't have defeated the PDP. And they thought we would never, as opposition, uh, get together. And that was the mistake they made. That's why they lost. I was going to say, Mr. President, uh, should the National Assembly come back with the, the bill and they edit out what you don't like, would this is sign it? I don't think I told them what I don't like. All I said, there should be options. We must not insist that it has to be direct. It should be consensus and indirect. So if they do that, would you sign it? Yes, I will. I will sign. All I would like to, uh, is that there should be options. You can't tell, you can't dictate to people and you said you are doing democracy. Allow them, uh, you know, uh, other uh, options so that they can make a choice. A constituency can come together and they say, okay, we pick Mr. A. Let me, let me take you back to the issue of the economy. And I'd like to know, uh, Your Excellency, what kind of economy do you think you want to be good to Nigerians? Well, the, the economy is free economy. And what is free economy? You allow people, you, you allow people, uh, you know, to make sure uh, that their industries are patronized. You have to stop uh, smuggling. You have to stop uh, developed countries dumping goods on your country. Because of technology, they can produce faster, they can produce more with, with less uh, resources. So you have to protect your economy. That was why ECOS and any other organization, uh, either within the system of ECOS or within Africa, we have to make sure that we have encouraged our own industries for employment, you know, for using our own resources, you know, and for security. Because of, we are so far behind in technology, if you allow dumping, I'm afraid, unemployment, especially in the case of Nigeria, where we have a large population, you are having, you are going to have trouble. So when you announced today that uh, Dr. Doyin Salami will now be advising you on the issues of the economy, 
Mm-hmm. Um, what specific role would you, because uh, he's the head of your Presidential Economic Advisory Council, yeah. in what specific areas do you want him to play? Is he going to double as the head of the Economic Advisory Council and the Economic Advisor? Yes, he's going to do that. He's capable of doing that. We have watched him. For example, the last time he briefed us, when I say us as the Executive Council, we found out that uh, Nigerian arable land, only 2.5% of Nigerian arable land is being used. Yet people are shouting of unemployment. If we have invested more in agriculture, look, when we closed the border with Benin and Nigeria Republic, we stopped importation of rice. Now Nigerian, we produce the rice we need and we even export. So really, we, we, we have to we, we have to exploit uh, 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 our own capacities. And uh, Dr. Salami, is, is, it was fantastic. Uh, he he is so committed, and economically he is. I think he's already a professor. Uh, we we need him, and he's so committed and patriotic. Why has the provision of regular electricity eluded several presidents? The Buhari administration set out in the beginning to fix this. But what has now gone wrong? One of the former heads of state between that time was bragging that he spent more than 15 billion American dollars, not Naira, on power. Why is the power? Why is the power? You once asked here in the villa, where is the power? Are you happy with where we currently are with the state of electricity in Nigeria? I am not because I have identified that no country can develop without infrastructure. And infrastructure means roads, rail, power. These are three leading ones. And uh, we are working very hard. When I say we, I mean this government, we are working very hard on the roads. Try to imagine what was happening even between Lagos and Ibadan six months ago and what it is now. And now we are doing from Lagos to Kano, the rail road from here to Kaduna to Kano. So we have to have that infrastructure right. And then Nigeria will mind, Nigerians will mind their own businesses. But when you can, when, when the infrastructure is not there, the roads are not done, the rail is virtually killed, there is no power, what do you expect people to do? Mr. President, in all honesty, there's been some work which we can see in roads and rails, mm -hmm. but power is a big question. Uh, we've been told we have 13,000 installed capacity. We've been told, oh, TCN, as a transmission company, can do about 7,500. But we know that constantly, for a long time now, all we have had on the grid is 4,000 megawatts. What exactly is the problem with getting electricity, you know, to increase and to the homes of Nigerians and businesses? Well, let us try to answer the problem first. TCN is 100% government. Sure. But we inherited what they call discourse. They almost buy the country almost based on geopolitical zones. What was the basis? I still couldn't find it. The people that own them, who are they? They are not uh, electrical engineers. They don't have money. It's just a political favor. And to remove a system and reintroduce one is no joke. Luckily, we have the TC and, 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 and that is trans transmission. And if we can get uh, our technology right with the plenty of sunlight we have, all we need are panels all over the place, and we cut the cost on transmission and, 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 and the likelihood of sabotaging the lines and so on. You asked, um, we're persisting on the economy just for a few minutes. You announced an economic projection plan uh, that of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. Mr. President, where are we on that? How many people have been lifted out of poverty so far? 
I can't tell you off head, but I'm telling you that we are acutely aware that Nigerian population, 35 years and below, are the majority. And they don't care how government is going to make it, let them get job for them. But I've just told you that land, only 2.5% of the arable land is being cultivated. So we are going to turn our attention for the time remaining for us to agriculture, but clear land, machinery, and so on. Probably, unfortunately, there is political problem. In the South, there is problem of land ownership. Very serious one. It's based on families and the ruling classes and so on. But luckily, uh, mostly in the North, that, that is, all land belongs to government, so government can take areas and, and so on. So I think for the time remaining for us, for the 17 months, we'll turn a lot to agriculture. But how are you doing on that plan of lifting millions of Nigerians? Because there is a target of just how many people you should be lifting every year. Are you on track or there is a setback? We have a setback and it's resource shortage because we need to buy machinery. Machinery tractors, clearing the land, dividing it, and encouraging people, you know, giving them seeds. You know, and fertilizers. And that costs money. Let me, there are a lot of Nigerians, millions of them who might be watching this interview right now, Mr. President. I know a lot of them might be wondering just how well you understand their sufferings. The number of people who cannot put food on their tables, who are not even sure where the next meal will be coming from. How much of these pains would you say you are aware of? I'm absolutely aware of it. But as I said, look at the vastness of Nigeria. Only 2.5% of the Arab land is being used. We realize it's rather too late, but we have to go back to the land. So we imagine that you'll be doing that very aggressively then? Well, we have started. Remember, people were, were defending on foreign rice before. Now we are exporting rice. We have made some progress, you know. The closing of the borders, 1,500 kilometers with Niger, and then the whole of uh, Benin Republic for a couple of years, stopping uh, importation of food. And Nigerians went back to the land, sufficient people went back to the land, and we are now uh, f f f adequately feeding ourselves. I think we made a lot of progress. How do you intend to encourage people? Because a lot of people will say that people were already, you know, expanding the CBN uh, through its Angkor Bor Boros exactly. program, uh, you know, made some progress in, in that regard. But there have been fears for their lives. Security has, has discouraged many from going into farming. Um, how do you intend to assure people that it will be okay for them to go back to the land? Well... As I said, we have so many meetings with the law enforcement agencies and uh, we, are going, we are already being very hard on, on those criminals and uh, there is an improvement in the situation of security, especially in the Northwest, where I mentioned, in the Northwest. Will it be sustained? It has to be sustained because if everybody rushes to the cities, what can we do? People have to be encouraged to go back to the land. We just have to encourage people to go back to the land. And doing that is to get machinery, clear the lands, provide fertilizer and seedlings. I'd like to take you up on the issue of the Chinese loans. During the course of your administration, Mr. President, the country is taking a significant number of Chinese loans. And uh, there is a possibility that we might be seeing the, the nation taking more to fix and build the much needed infrastructure in the country. There are fears though in many quarters with these loans that the nations, the nation Nigeria might be being plunged into a debt trap. Are we? Well, 
we take that where it is necessary. I told you now of something that I'm sure you know, what it used to be between Lagos and Ibadan alone, not to go to the rest of the country. But we got the Chinese to help us in the rail, in the roads. How can we turn that down? If we had turned that down, maybe between Lagos and Ibadan now we have to walk. So the Chinese are welcome. Anybody that is prepared to come and help us our infrastructure, I told you the roads, the rail and power will be welcome. As much as I wanted us to move on from the economy, and when I was asking the question about the Chinese loans, one we wonder uh, where the nation was when you took over uh, office uh, in 2015. Our debt stock at the time was about 12 trillion. Now it is about 32 trillion. Inflation rate was about 9%. It is now sitting about over 15%. Unemployment rate was about 8.19%. It is now 33.28%. Uh, exchange rate was about 197 naira to a dollar. It's way over 400 naira to a dollar. So people will look back, economically speaking, and say, look, um, before you took over office, some of these indicators were fair. And now, the figures are not friendly at all. Well, I'm not sure how correct the calculations are. But all I know is that uh, we have to allow people to get access to the farms. As I said, we just have to go back to the land. We have to go back to the land. What we have done so far, as I said, we have achieved some successes. And people ought to uh, measure our successes vis-a-vis -vis the problems when we started. You have given your figures as, 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 you, as you calculated. But the important thing is this, that uh, uh, the farms that you know produce uh, machinery and so on tractors and so on we have to build the infrastructure and we have identified the infrastructure we need we have to make the rail working we have to make uh, the roads and uh, if you have listened to the minister of works and housing how much of the roads we have built and rehabilitated and how much of the rail we have done. And if you talk to the Minister of uh, Transportation, the planned uh, transportation from Lagos to Ibadan, then to the east, then from Port Harcourt to Maiduguri, and then from here to Kano, and even up to, up to Niger. Um, I think we, we need to uh, appreciate what we have done with what we have within the time we have been here. Um, maybe in 2014 and so on, I told you from 2014 to uh, well, back to 1999, how much we are earning and the problem now uh, the petroleum industry is becoming more, more complicated and unreliable, let me put it that way. No doubt, the issue of Namde Kano and the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, could be a touchy one. And Igbo elders will be looking forward to an update on their meeting with the president. Yes, he obliges and gives a status report. Recently, you told a delegation of the Southeast elders who visited you here in the villa that you would consider their request for the release of Namde Kano, the leader of the proscribed indigenous uh, people of the Afro IPOP. Do I have any update on that? There is one institution that I wouldn't dare interfere with, that is judiciary. Kanu's case is with the judiciary. But what I wonder is when Kanu was safely in Europe, abusing 
this administration and mentioning too many things. I never thought really he wanted to voluntarily come and defend himself on the accusation he has. So we are giving him an opportunity to defend himself in our system, not to be abusing uh, us from Europe, you know, as if he as if he was not a Nigerian, let him come here in, with us and then criticize us here. Uh, and then Nigerians know that I don't interfere with the judiciary. Let, let, let him be listened to. So, yes, but no, for those no. who are saying that he should be released, no, we cannot release him. No possibility of a political solution? No. There is a possibility of political solution. If people behave themselves, all well and good. But you can't go to, uh, to a foreign country and keep on uh, sending uh, incorrect uh, economic and security problem against your country uh, and thinking that you, you never have to account for, for what you have been doing. Let him account for what he has been doing. Mr. President, as we wind down now, I don't know, I, I think that sometimes you must sit and reflect about when you, you know, you tried many times to be leader of this country and you succeeded on the fourth attempt. And I'm sure that you had your goals for this country when you had, when you ran for office, the many times you offered yourself. Um, when you think and, and look at where Nigeria is and the way forward, do you fear for this country? Do you fear for our oneness and our unity? No, I don't. I don't because, to be frank with you, from 15th January 1966, I have been in all the trouble in this country, including being in detention for more than three years. I, I think um, Nigerians they make noise, I think, to get a better deal. But they know that we are better together than separate. I sincerely believe in that. They are just, yeah, they just make noise so that they can get better deals. One conversation that has refused to exit national discourse in Nigeria is restructuring. True federalism is necessary at this juncture of our political and democratic evolution. Some will say the APC had it clearly written in their manifesto. But what does President Buhari think about it? But there are those who believe that if we continue at this rate, we might not last together for much longer, that we need to restructure to truly achieve our potential. Do you see that argument? <laughs> those who talk of restructuring, I want them to define what do they mean in their own concept of restructuring. Do they want more states? If they want, look at the map of Nigeria. At whose expense? I, have, I was having a problem with people from South East. They said they wanted each, each geopolitical zone about six states they want. I say, okay, go and look at the map and see how many, how many of the existing states will contribute to the other states. That was the end uh, I heard about them. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, because of those who think that the federal government is too heavy, it's handling too many things. The states need more powers. They need to be able to unleash themselves. And that if we're able to empower the states and in turn empower the local governments, perhaps unemployment will not be at such, uh, at such a high level. Perhaps states will be a little more autonomous to handle a lot more things at their level. Do, do you consider that argument sometimes? I do, but I want to, you, you have just mentioned it now, try and find out the relationship between the local governments and the states. Clearly, we had overshot the time allotted and it was time to go, but not before we snuck in some poses, single words or phrases to which we requested one-liners. 
Mr. President, as we wrap up now, I'm just going to quickly get your immediate reaction to the following phrases. All we're going to ask you to do is that for this last words, which we will say, tell us what comes to mind, maybe in one sentence or two. Um, and the first one is Nigeria's young people. Nigeria's? Nigeria's young people, the young people of Nigeria. What comes to your mind when you think of them? In one or two sentences. I wish when they go to school, when they work hard, when they earn the degree, they don't do it thinking that government must give them a job. You get educated because an educated person is certainly better than an educated one, even in identifying personal problems. So education is not just meant to hang on to, go to government to give you a job, uh, and uh, what the colonials uh, indoctrinated on to have a car, to have a house, and uh, to start work at 8 o'clock and close at 2 o'clock. No. All right. Another word, in another phrase is PDP. What comes to mind when you hear that word? PDP. Failure. <laughs> what about Lagos Ibadan Expressway? Well, look at it. Is it not on? Lagos Ibadan. As I said, if we hadn't uh, put to the Chinese and get some people to work for us, you would have been working that distance by now. Another one is the second Niger Bridge. Mm -hmm. yes. What comes to mind when you hear that one? Well, go and ask the people in the South East. They are celebrating it before it is even completed. Because it is giving them another route, you know, to, uh, to get to the other parts of the country. INEC? INEC? Mm -hmm. Are you criticizing a professor? <laughs> I think the professor is doing his best. Um, he has already told us um, about the elections that are coming in some of the states before the general election in uh, 14 months time or so. 2023 elections. Mm -hmm. 2023 elections. What comes to your mind? It's not my problem. You're not going to be interested in who succeeds you? No. Let him come, whoever it is. All important things, I, must, I made sure that they are on record. Nobody should ask me to come and give you any evidence in any court. Otherwise, whoever it is, he will be in trouble. Because all important things are on record. I made sure about that. Important issues are all on record. You don't have any favorite for 2023 in your party? No, I wouldn't because uh, he may be eliminated if I mention it. I better keep his it secret. <laughs> uh, the last phrase, Mr. President, is your legacy. Well, I think uh, my legacy is that um, I try to make sure that um, we conducted ourselves with integrity. That means we stopped all the stealings as much as the system can allow. We stopped with appropriation. And for Nigeria, that is very, very important. The expectation from Nigeria, I tell you, is a young population, the expectation is so high that we must make sure that the resources are managed properly and that they understand resources are being managed properly. If they don't, if they don't, if they rebel, there will be trouble, a lot of trouble. And then it was a wrap. Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, many thanks for giving us this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you so much indeed. BGITV, you move a mawo. Or a to the team, this is move a bo. It's a low rishi, rishi. One while all lock on Joko, the rain to go to Shuan. At a one rag of Fikobo, you reward a food and room to more. Till we talk about Emma Fikara.
Television station. Eko si e ta ipolo wo oja wa lati ba wa do po lori plus 234 70 38 22 6160 fu awon ti nbe lo ile de nigeria 070 38 22 6160 bgi tv baba gbagede imo tv o ga ni konla baba gbagede imo television station zido de